two sixes, a four. That's random. Four, five, and a six. Still random. Or maybe it isn't. Randomness doesn't really exist. Uh, pretty much if I have the same number at the top and I throw at the exact same way, it will always land on the exact same number. I'm just not capable of doing it. So it's not predictable, but it's also not random. When it comes to randomness in games, it's also not really random. And when you're creating a random game these days, roguelikes, things like that, they have a lot of randomness going on, but it's not really random. And actually, as a game developer, you don't want randomness. You want as much control as possible. So when games have randomness in there, a random level generator, random uh, item placement, uh, monsters, whatever, it's not really random. So um, let's talk about that. All right, randomness in games. Um, let's let's start with an example. Let's say we start creating a level for a dungeon-like game. Why not? We start with a room. This is just a, a starting room, nothing special, nothing weird. But as soon as we have the room, the first random thing is gonna happen. We're gonna create another room, and for that we need to pick a random direction. So we're gonna pick random from up, right, down, left, and in that direction we'll place a new room. So let's pick randomly room to the right, mostly because I didn't leave room on the other side. We're gonna create a new room, which is now randomly created, but still within limitations. It just wasn't created anywhere in this level. It was created in a random direction. We now have two rooms. A second random choice could be the size of the room. It might be a very big room. It might be a very small room. We can have a randomness decide for us. However, it's not fully random because there are boundaries and rules and that's why it's usually called procedural generator and not random generator. There are rules to it. We can't have a room that's extremely big or bigger than even the available space. So there's a limit there already. We can't have a very tiny room because then you have no room or space to move around as a player. So there are limitations on the minimum size and the maximum size. Even though it's random, there are a lot of rules dictating how random it is and, and what can be done and what can't be done. And usually in this case, you just ask for a random number and based on that number, you take a decision when creating levels. I'm not gonna talk about level generator in this video. I'm more gonna talk about the control over the randomness because I think that's the problem a lot of other developers are having. You can't just pick random numbers anywhere from out of the sky. You need some good code to handle and manage those random numbers. Now the standard way to get random numbers is that almost every language has a function that will allow you to just uh, grab a random number and you don't really know where it's coming from. In most cases, it will come from your PC timer, your internal clock of your PC. It will randomly pick a number and since that's going in, I think nanoseconds, maybe milliseconds, at least a lot of numbers very quickly, it will always seem random. But in theory, if you have the exact same computer running at the exact same speed, and you start the program at the exact same moment, then you would always have the exact same number. Because it's not random, there's an order to it. So over the years, I created a lot of games with randomness in there, and um, I came to the conclusion that I don't want the system dictating which random number I'm getting. Um, for example, a, a very simple example, a lot of good roguelikes have a seeding number, and if you enter that seeding number, you'd always get the exact same level. And that's really the control you want. You don't want your computer to tell you which random numbers you're getting. You want to have a random table or a, another way to create a random number, starting with a seeding number. Now, usually you can seed the standard random generator, so you can dictate where it begins, like resetting the clock, sort of. But that random number generator might also be used in other areas of your game code that you don't know, uh, libraries you're using, third party, or uh, just system code, whatever, they might also access that same random number generator. And that's a problem, especially if you want all the control of the randomness, because you might desire to create that same random level at all times. For example, for a daily challenge, every daily challenge on everybody's computer or device or system or wherever they are playing your game, they should have the exact same level. So you need all the control about randomness as you can get. So the way I solved it is by using my own random generator. It's just a couple of lines of code and it will allow you to generate a new number every time. 
and you can seed it any way you like. And if you start seeding it at the start of your level generator, it should always give you the same exact number. For my last game, Space Grunts 2, I actually went a few steps further and I gave every entity in the game its own random generator, which means that the level generator has a random number creator, but then every entity that's being created is getting a seeding number from the level generator and then does its own thing so that the level generator can do all of its stuff with its own random numbers and then all the entities performing artificial intelligence stuff like moving, uh, deciding where the player is, where to attack, what to spawn, what to create, what to what to be. Sometimes a monster can be different things. So monsters have a lot of randomness going on in their own code and it doesn't interfere with what the level generator does. So it's always possible to create the exact same level with the exact same type of entities in there, which will then do the exact same things they should be doing. Whatever that is, because that's still random, just very much controlled randomness these couple of lines will give you a random number every time and it will then increase its own number to the next one you could pre-generate these and throw them in a table to look up later but there's not a lot going on here so you can just get them on the fly you don't need a whole table to keep track of all the numbers you can reset it at any time just keep track of the seeding number that the entity has or the level generator or whatever this random number is powering make sure you have that seeding number and that you can reset it to that number and you should always be able to generate the exact same numbers and thus generate the same levels or outcome of various things. So if you want to create a roguelike or another random type game, make sure you control as much of the randomness as possible that you always know what's going on with the random number generator. So if possible, create your own one, keep track of what's happening and you should be creating cool games with it. That's it for this week's Tech Talk. Um, see you on the next Tech Talk video or next Thursday with the weekly uh, behind the scenes video. But that random number generator, random number generator, they might also access that same random number, num